In the late 1970s, America was at a critical point. There was an economic recession, some of you remember. Same time, prices, instead of going down, there was inflation. It was called stagflation. Unemployment was at a high point. Double digits, double digit inflation. An oil crisis, America, Americans were on gas lines across the country. The inflation rate had climbed higher every year of President Carter's presidency from 6% to now 12%. America's arch enemy, the Soviet Union, was advancing around the world in Africa, Afghanistan. In 1979, it invaded Afghanistan. America did nothing. I mean, nothing to, to stop it. One of America's strongest allies in the Middle East, the Shah of Iran, fell from power in the Iranian Revolution. Iran became a radical Islamic nation hating America. The American embassy in Iran was taken over by Islamic radicals, and they took Americans hostage, over 50 Americans hostage. Every day, they gathered in the streets of Tehran to chant, death to America, death to America. Every day, Americans turned on their television sets to watch Death to America. America was helpless. In other embassies around the world, American embassies were, were taken over, were attacked. It was seen as the beginning of the end of the American age. Believers sensed something. And this scripture that was given to Solomon when he prayed, what happens, Lord, if Israel turns away from you and they're judged? Give them mercy, and God answered him and said, listen, Solomon, here's my promise. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. A call went forth from a ministry led by John and Ann Jimenez of Rock Church, located near Cape Henry, where America was founded. It would be called Washington for Jesus. It was a gathering for repentance based on that one scripture, if my people, if my people. Just days before the gathering took place, the government, Jimmy Carter sent in a plan, sent in a, a helicopters to rescue the hostages. But it was a disaster. A dust cloud forced one helicopter to crash land, another to return to the carrier, another helicopter had damaged its hydraulic system, another helicopter crashed, into a transport aircraft containing fuel in a fire that destroyed the two aircraft involved in the desert, resulting in the death of eight American soldiers. It damaged American credibility around the world. In many, many eyes, it ended the presidency of Jimmy Carter. A gloom descended on America, helplessness, even the military. And now the bodies of the soldiers were displayed throughout the world by the Iranians, death to America. It all happened just days before that gathering. Believers began gathering on the Washington Mall based on that promise over and over again, if my people, if my people, hundreds of thousands of them, confessing their sins, renouncing them, turning to repentance and praying for two major things above everything else. One, they all joined hands and prayed that where America was helpless, that God himself would by his hand free the hostages. And secondly, that God, as they lifted up their hands, to the Capitol building, to the western side of the Capitol. They prayed that God put you, who you want in government, you choose and you put them there. Within months of that gathering, there was an election and there was a revolution at the polls. A new government, new presidency, a government and a Congress filled with people who pledged themselves to uphold biblical values. The new president was Ronald Reagan. He would talk about the need for prayer and for a spiritual revival in America. There was a mother who taught her boy to pray and read the Bible. She would later, later give her Bible to her son. In that Bible, she would pick out one verse and write next to it the words for the healing of nations. The boy was Ronald Reagan. It was prophetic. He would become president at a time when America needed a real healing. I still remember the prayer that was prayed because I was there that day as a new believer that was prayed as everybody, we lifted our hands to that western terrace of the Capitol for God to put his people. Months after that came the inauguration. The election, before that, the election was a revolution at the polls. The new president was swept into office. 
The inauguration had always taken place, I think, from the time of, around the time of Andrew Jackson on the east side of the Capitol facing the Supreme Court. But Ronald Reagan made a decision to change that after over more than a century, first president in history to be inaugurated on the Western Terrace. First time where it has been to this day. He stood on the steps of the Capitol on the other side facing the Washington Monument, the mall. He was now facing the ground where all the believers had prayed, if my people. He was standing on the very spot where they put their hands on that terrace now to become the new president, which it has been since then from that day. He, is the, he was there. It's like God saying, I am answering your prayer right where you prayed it. But something else happened. Gave the inauguration to address. And then within, it, within the same hour, the American hostages were released from Iran. The two prayers prayed on that very ground, answered the same day and the same spot. And the history of America and the world literally changed. Skyrocketing inflation ended. Unemployment faded. The economy turned around and rebounded. It became one of the most prosperous periods in American history. It would lead all the way to 9-11. Some called it mourning in America. America's image around the world recovered. Its military grew stronger. Its arch enemy, the Soviet Union, suddenly made no more advances and then began to crumble. By the end of the next decade, it was got all intents and purposes had, was crumbling. It would be gone and the only superpower left would be America. World history literally changed. Whatever, this is not to endorse everything about any platform, but it changed. But there was a mystery to it. It changed when Reagan raised his hand to take the oath. The world saw that hand but it didn't see the other hand. Raised his right hand, that's what hit the history changed, but his left hand was on the Bible. And it was on a specific verse. What was the verse by which history changed? The verse he had chosen was, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. The same verse that was prayed on the same ground by his people, the history of the world changed because of the prayers of God's people. On that, there's all that happened. It was not military. It was not economics. It was the prayers of God's people and the faithfulness of God answering his word. It was as if America was given a second chance. But it all changed on that. So, in this, see, this has affected your life, no matter who you are. But it was the prayers of God's people. You will not hear this in the news, but it was the prayers of God's people. So in this last election, when every expert was declaring it hopeless, believers still gathered to pray for the election. There were prayer movements across America, praying. There, there were prayer movements praying for over a year for this election. There were some that were even launched through the Harbinger, but they were happening all over and around the world too. Even in Jerusalem, they were praying that night. Virtually every week here, we were praying, Lord, give revival. Even if it looks hopeless, give revival. The pollsters took into account every factor except one, prayer. Second Chronicles 7.14. They took in every natural factor, but they forgot to take in the supernatural one, God. Never give up hope. God's word is stronger than kingdoms. His faithfulness is more powerful than the world. And any situation in your life, against all odds, 